It seems today that all you see are trendy dances on TikTok, but Family Guy is still on TV. It's been a while since we've kept up with Peter and the rest of the Griffins. Luckily, there's a Family Guy 107 right here for you, just like those 107 Facts videos on which you used to rely. Here's 107 Facts about Family Guy. Welcome to Channel Frederator, the Cartoon Central of the internet. Before we begin, we publish new videos every week, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Let's jump in straight away with the first episode of Season 16, Emmy winning episode. This episode features three different guest actors, each from Modern Family. Sofia Vergara, Julie Bowen, and Ty Burrell. Number 2. Despite Peter's complaints, Family Guy has actually won seven Emmys across a number of categories including Outstanding Music and Lyrics, Outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation, and Outstanding Character Voiceover Performance. Number 3. However, it still grinds his gears that Family Guy still has not won the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Animated Program. Four episodes have been nominated, but none have won. Number 4. In Episode 2, Fox in the Men House, Lois is impersonated by Meryl Streep, who actually plays herself as a guest voice. This is the second time Lois has been impersonated impersonated by another character. First was by Mr. Rogers, who didn't voice himself. Number 5. For the next episode, Nanny Goats, Meg appears but has no lines. Over the next season or so, Meg's lines are limited in general because Mila Kunis, her voice actor, was mostly away taking care of her newborn son. Number 6. Peter's phone number is given as 5550112. Strangely enough, Seamus is shown to have the same phone number in the next episode, Follow the Money. Number 7. In that same episode, Episode, Follow the Money, the serial number of the dollar bill in the opening credits is the same as the writing season and episode production number. Number 8. Episode 5, Three Directors, is Carrie Fisher's last recorded performance as Angela. She would still appear as Angela in the upcoming episode Don't Be a Dickens at Christmas, but the last lines she read were for this episode. Number 9. According to executive producer Richard Appel, the last direction the Family Guy team gave to Carrie Fisher as Angela was a deep French kiss with with Peter Griffin. Go wild. Number 10. At one point, the Family Guy production team considered making this episode an hour long. Just the Michael Bay segment alone was 18 minutes long and was almost made into an entirely different episode itself. Number 11. In episode 6, the D in apartment 23, we see that Brian's Twitter account is at dog backwards. Turns out that handle is actually a real Twitter account that's attributed to Brian and has been since 2016. Number 12. You can also see a bunch of hate tweets to directed to Brian. If you look closely, they're from various Fuzzy Door production staff. One tweet from Matt Fussfeld of American Dad reads, If I were the Baywatch lifeguards, I'd let you drown, you pig. Number 13. For episode 8, Crimes and Meg's Demeanor, Meg gets her hands on a fake ID. On the ID, Meg's measurements are listed as 4'8 and 160 pounds. Number 14. At the same time, we have to take these figures with a grain of salt. It is a fake ID, and the picture that she used is of former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, just with Meg's classic pink cap. Number 15. Season 16's 10th episode, Boy, Dog, Meets Girl, Dog, had a very different title behind the scenes. The episode's original title was registered as Brian Dates a Bitch. Before air, it was changed for a pretty obvious reason. Number 16. You thought that was vulgar? Apparently, the original Family Guy animators originally showed various angles of Max mounting Ellie. However, each one was rejected by the network, so they had to make the scene take place from Ellie's point of view to dodge the censors. Number 17. Also, Brian and Stewie joke about how they were supposed to be on one of the planes involved in this is a reference to how Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane was supposed to be on Flight 11, one of the planes that crashed into the of course, he voices both Brian and Stewie. Number 18. Episode 11, Dog Bites Bear, is the 300th episode of Family Guy, both written and broadcast on television. Number 19. In episode 13, V is for Mystery, there's a morbid visual South Park goof. If you look closely in the title sequence, you can see the skeleton of South Park's Kenny McCormick. You bastards. Number 20. Episode 16, Family Guy Through the Years, is one giant homage to classic television shows. In 
in the introduction, you'll see tons of references to old school shows in the background, including Twilight Zone, I Love Lucy, The Brady Bunch, and many more. Number 21. When Family Guy heads to the 70s, the outfit that Meg wears to the cemetery is exactly like one of the outfits Mila Kunis wore as Jackie in that 70s show. Number 22. Episode 18, HTT Pete, features Adam West's last speaking appearance after he died in 2017. His final lines are when he reads from the book of Just Jared at Hammer's funeral. Number 23. Adam West's death reverberated throughout season 17 as well. In the first episode, West was actually supposed to officiate the wedding, but he died before he got the chance to record his lines. Number 24. In episode 2, Dead Dog Walking, you can see that Lois's Instagram is Daughtry Mom, a nod to her love of Daughtry. When the episode came out though, the real handle Daughtry Mom wasn't tied to Lois, unlike Brian's Twitter. Number 25. The title of episode 4, Big Trouble in Little Quahog, is a play on the Kurt Russell action movie Big Trouble in Little China. Number 26. For that same episode, the title was originally registered as Shrinky Dinks, named for those plastic art toys that you can turn into keychains and stuff. Number 27. In episode 6, Stand by Meg, Chris says that he's not Jewish. While he obviously doesn't go to temple or anything, ethnically, Chris is actually Jewish from Lois's side of the family. Lois found out that she had Jewish heritage in the season 8 episode Family Goy. Number 28. When Meg fires her rifle during the race in episode 7, Griffin Winter Games, the rifle kicks up with recoil. In reality, those biathlon rifles are designed to have as little recoil as possible, so Meg's rifle shouldn't have kicked up at all. Number 29. In episode 8, Con Eris, we hear Pip's full name, which I won't repeat here because we don't have all day. Just know that the name is loaded with references from historically wealthy families like Vanderbilt and Rockefeller, celebrity names like Louis Dreyfus and Mellencamp, to complete nonsense like Big League Chew and Monty Python. Number 30. Seth MacFarlane's voiceover work for episode 8 actually won him his fifth primetime Emmy. Number 31. Episode 9, Pawtucket Pete, starts off with a cold open of Angela dying because Carrie Fisher died as well. In the opening theme song, Angela is replaced by Consuela. Number 32. For episode 11, Trump Guy, when Peter and Trump fight in Congress, you can see a number of prominent politicians in the background. Among others, you'll see depictions of Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, Ted Cruz, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer. Number 33. The Family Guy writers are originally also wanted to depict Trump's national security advisor Michael Flynn, but they felt that the reference wouldn't be timely enough. Instead, they replaced him with Roger Stone. Number 34. In episode 12, Bry Robot, Robot Brian says, Whoa, ass ahoy. This is a callback to one of Brian's lines from the very first Family Guy episode to air, Death Has a Shadow. Number 35. Episode 15, No Giggity No Doubt, is dedicated to Luke Perry, who died on March 4th, 2019, just a few days ahead of the episode's release day of March 10th. Perry famously had a guest spot as himself back in season 2. Number 36. Episode 16, You Can't Handle the Booth, features a fictional Family Guy episode called New Phone Who Dis. You can see that the episode's production number is HACX14, which is the same production number as episode 16. Number 37. If you want to watch New Phone Who Dis without the extra commentary from the characters, you can see it on the DVD release of season 17. Number 38. Oh, and if you don't know what a DVD is, then thankfully Brian and Stewie take some time in this episode to explain what it is and how it works. Number 39. In episode 18, Throw It Away, Peter's storage unit has a number of references to older episodes piled up in there. You can see his Gary the No Trash Cougar costume, the skull of Chief Diamond Phillips, and Peter's romance novel, Peter Rodica, among other things. Number 40. In the internet corn cutaway joke, the website www.cornography.com is actually a working URL. Don't worry though, it just links back to the official Family Guy website. Number 41. In episode 19, Girl Interneted, Refrigerator Meg's jersey looks just like a Chicago Bears football jersey. This is likely a reference to William the Refrigerator Perry, who played for the Bears from 1985 to 1993. Number 42. The sound effect that plays when Meg gets a new follower is the same sound that a Nintendo Game Boy makes when it powers on. Number 43. Episode 20, Adam West High, is of course dedicated to the memory of Adam West. The end theme incorporates the theme of Adam West's original Batman series, and the late mayor even gets a 21 cat salute. Number 44, sure enough, for the first episode of season 18, with Mayor Adam West gone, Seamus fills his spot in the opening theme song. Number 45, in episode 2, 
Brida. Ida asks if Friday Night Videos is still a thing. While it's not a thing anymore, Friday Night Videos was a music video show that aired on NBC from 1983 to 2002. Number 46. This episode also gives us some random Joe Swanson trivia. We learn that somehow Joe's adult teeth have never come in. Number 47. Episode 4, Disney's The Reboot, features a BoJack Horseman gag. However, when they show BoJack's Hollywood sign, it still has the D, despite the D being gone in the original show. Number 48. In episode 5, Catfight, Adam West actually gets a voice credit. He briefly appears as a ghost that Peter catches with a Ghostbusters proton pack. Number 49. Episode 6, Peter and Lois's wedding actually retcons a bunch of the Family Guy lore. For instance, the episode alters the story of how Peter met Cleveland and Quagmire, which was first shown in Death Lives from season 3. Number 50. Here's another small detail that this episode changes. Lois's middle name. In the season 11 episode Call Girl, we learn that her middle name is Patrice. However, this time around, her middle name is given as common denominator. Number 51. In episode 8, Shanks Giving, one of the prisoners in the yearbook is Orlando Gumate, named for Family Guy's storyboard artist and director. Number 52. In episode 10, Connie's Celica, Brian calls the squirrels neighborinos. This is a reference to Ned Flanders' classic phrase from The Simpsons. Number 53. Episode 11, Shortcuts, is all about Brian wrestling with the idea of getting neutered. However, there's a cutaway gag in season 4 that shows he already was. You can see Brian decked out with a cone, a lower shaved patch, and stitches. Number 54. In episode 12, Undergrounded, the sign on the donkey in Mexico reads Aborto Andale. While it's supposed to mean fast abortions, Andale actually means something closer to come on. Instead, it should read Abortos Rapidos. Number 55. At one point, Joe claims that he was on Seinfeld. Technically, he's not wrong. His voice actor, Patrick Warburton, played a recurring character on Seinfeld, Elaine's on and off boyfriend, David Putty. Number 56. The Quahog Marina in episode 13, Rich Old Stewie, is named after Robert Kraft. Kraft is the owner of the New England Patriots football team and Gillette Stadium, their home field. Number 57. In episode 13, The Movement, Peter tries to fight his diarrhea off, saying that he even tried smoking for the first time. However, we've definitely seen Peter smoke before. Season 12 even has an episode all about Peter taking up smoking, secondhand spoke. Number 58. Episode 18, Better Off Meg, teaches us a number of things about Meg. First, her age. Her tombstone states that she was born in 1999 and died in season 18. We also learn her birthday is March 23rd. This episode debuts in May 2020, so based on that, Meg would be about 21 years old. Number 59. Also, we get a look at Meg's actual ID. Unlike Meg's bogus Chris Christie ID, this new one says that Meg is 5'2 and weighs 156 pounds. Number 60. We also learn that Meg has mismatched feet based on her bowling shoes. Her left foot is a lady's size 7, while her right foot is a men's size 11. Number 61. Let's not dunk on Meg too much, though. This episode also shows that she's a great bowler and has the distinct honor of being the Quiznos loyalty king. Number 62. Episode 19, Holly Bibble, actually replaced a previously registered episode called Quagmire Guy. No telling what the Quagmire episode was about, but I'd guess it's about as far from the Bible as you can go. Number 63. This episode shows the Last Supper taking place at El Torito. If you want to have your next supper at El Torito, you're in luck. It's a real chain of Mexican restaurants on the US West Coast. Also, it's true. Wombats do poop in cubes. Number 64. However, this episode didn't get everything right. Peter mentions Paul as a disciple, but Paul was not one of the 12. Also, Paul didn't even convert to Christianity until after the crucifixion. Number 65. In episode 20, Movin' In, Principal Shepard's song, we can see the Griffin family Wi-Fi is Joe Swanson Guest. Sure enough, they're just stealing Joe's Wi-Fi. We also see that they're stealing Joe's Wi-Fi in season 13's This Little Piggy. Number 66. The bookstore Naren's Books is named after Family Guy storyboard artist Michael Naren. Number 67. Season 19 kicks off with a big deal, Stewie's first word. Of course, we've seen the Griffins understand Stewie a number of times throughout the show. This time, though, it's officially his first word. And of course, it's fuck. Number 68. 
This is also Family Guy's 350th episode, and the first to have the 20th century logo, sans the fox since Disney bought them out. Number 69. In episode 2 of season 19, The Talented Mr. Stewie, we learn Rupert's backstory. He used to belong to Chris, and his name was Skippy. Number 70. In episode 3, Boys and Squirrels, Joe mispronounces Willem Dafoe as William Dafoe. Funny enough, William Dafoe is actually Willem Dafoe's real name. I can't help Joe out with Chris in Dunst and Marble movies, though. Number 71. Also, Meg has a morbid fascination with squirrels. In this episode, she says that she wants to take pictures of their dead bodies. Back in season 11's Friends Without Benefits, Chris mentioned that Meg taught him how to poison squirrels. Number 72. In episode 5, La Familia Guy, Chris calls his wife Tammy in English, but the subtitles refer to her as Apollonia. This is a reference to Michael Corleone's first wife in The Godfather. The car bomb joke is also a reference. Number 73. Tammy slash Apollonia is actually Chris's second wife. He was first married to Loka from the season 4 episode Jungle Love, even though it was technically an accident. Number 74. Episode 6, Meg's Wedding, throws some more Meg trivia our way. According to Bruce, Meg's middle name is, apparently, Harvey Oswald. Number 75. In episode 7, Wild Wild West, Peter claims that Reddit says that he's responsible for 39 deaths throughout Family Guy's run. However, the night that Wild Wild West first aired, somebody asked Family Guy's Twitter how high Peter's body count actually was. They said, like, 52, so it seems like the jury's still out. Number 76. Episode 8, Pawtucket Pat, establishes that Pawtucket Pat was alive during colonial times when he founded the brewery. However, in Season 2's Wasted Talent, Peter actually met a Willy Wonka-esque Pawtucket Pat when he went to the brewery. Number 77. Peter, Quagmire, and Joe speak German at the end of Episode 11, Boy's Best Friend. Thankfully, I've got a translation for you. Peter says, I am glad that everything is back to normal. Quagmire says, I'm sorry about your car, Joe. And Joe responds, it's okay. Now where is Jerome with the wiener? Number 78. In episode 12, and then there's Fraud, Stewie's yearbook has some Family Guy staff in there. There's Jonathan Gebhardt, storyboard artist, and Hilary Hager, production coordinator. Number 79. Episode 13, P. Terminator, also references Patrick Warburton's role in Seinfeld. When Terminator Peter scans Joe, Cleveland, and Quagmire, Joe's info reads Putty from Seinfeld. Number 80. At the same time, Cleveland comes up as frequent bathtub accidents. Family Guy fans know this is a reference to the recurring gag where Cleveland's house gets destroyed as he's taking a bath. Number 81. One of the customers of the week in episode 15, customer of the week, is actually Family Guy producer Richard Appel. Number 82. When Meg goes to college in episode 18, Meg goes to college, Meg checks out the sorority Alpha Delta Pi. Although they have tons of chapters in real life, there's no chapter of Alpha Delta Pi at Brown. Number 83. Also, Meg sings Love is a Battlefield in Russian. Mila Kunis was actually born in Ukraine, and Russian is her native language. Number 84. In episode 19, Family Cat, the actual guy picture that Quagmar holds up is of actual guy and evolutionary biology professor Yaroslav Flegger. Flegger was the first one to discover and study the effects of toxoplasmosis on humans. Number 85. Family Guy's 20th season saw one major cast change. Episode 1, LASIK Instinct, is Arif Zahir's debut as the new voice of Cleveland Brown. Mike Henry is still credited as Cleveland on some holdover episodes he recorded before they recast. Number 86. Mike Henry played Cleveland for 20 years, but decided to step away from the role so that a person of color could take over the character. Number 87. Arif Zahir was offered the role because of his spot-on Cleveland impression, among other characters, that he did on his YouTube channel. Number 88. While he no longer plays Cleveland, Mike Henry is still on Family Guy, voicing Bruce, Herbert, and Consuela. Number 89. Episode 2, Rock Hard, is surprisingly the first episode where Patrick Warburton is credited as a full cast member instead of just a guest voice. Moving forward, Warburton would be credited like this from here on in. Number 90. Also, this episode is dedicated to Norm Macdonald, who died a few weeks earlier. He regularly played death on Family Guy. Number 91. I can't believe I'm saying this, but in Episode 5, Brief Encounter, Family Guy makes a JoJo's reference. The episode ends with a to-be-continued meme, complete with roundabout from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Number 92. 
In episode 6, Cootie and the Blowhard, Joe gives Brian the wand that Peter gave him and Bonnie as their wedding gift. However, when Joe and Bonnie first appeared in season 1, they were already married. Number 93. In episode 7, Peter Schmidt Manor, Lois jokes that Mad TV is funnier than SNL. Makes sense, considering that Alex Borstein, Lois's voice actor, was on Mad TV for a number of years. Number 94. The Happy Asking Panda from episode 10, Christmas Crime, is just like a Furby. And just like a Furby, the panda is suspicious as hell. In 1999, the Pentagon actually banned Furbies from the premises out of fear that they were being used for spying. Number 95. In episode 11, Mr. Act, Jesus says that toenails grow after you die. Not to argue with the Son of God, but that's actually a common misconception. Instead, the dehydration causes skin to shrink and retract, making nails look longer. Number 96. Episode 14, HBO No, includes a spoof of Game of Thrones. According to Family Guy, the RR in George RR R. Martin stands for Railroad, and here I thought it stood for Raymond Richard. Number 97. The cutaway joke of Quagmire's funeral in episode 15, Hard Boiled Meg, includes a familiar face. You can see that the who else but Quagmire guy is there to pay his respects. Number 98. The title and plot of episode 17, All About Alana, are references to the 1950 movie All About Eve. It's about a young actress who sabotages the older actress who initially helps her. Number 99. The Camp Chris Goes To in Episode 18, Girlfriend A, is called Camp Washington Football Team. This is a reference to the Washington Commanders, formerly the Washington Redskins, the football team that changed their name because it was offensive. Number 100. Finally, we've hit the latest season, Season 21. In Episode 4, The Manchurian Candidate, Joe and Bonnie's daughter Susie has black hair this time instead of her usual blonde hair. Number 101. In episode 6, Happy Halloween, when Hologram Peter is defeated, he morphs into Homer Simpson, Fred Flintstone, and also a character called Larry. Larry is from Seth MacFarlane's Larry Shorts, which eventually led to Family Guy. Number 102. While episode 8, Get Stewie, was promoted as the 400th Family Guy episode, it's only the 400th episode by production order. In release order, it's only episode 397. Number 103. Get Stewie was actually directly pitched to the producers by creator Seth MacFarlane. Number 104. According to an AMA he did in 2017, MacFarlane actually hasn't been a writer on Family Guy since like 2010. Instead, he's just focused on producing and voice acting. Number 105. Unlike Get Stewie, Episode 11, Love Story Guy, is actually the 400th episode of Family Guy to be released. Number 106. As for what's next, McFarlane confirmed in 2019 that a Family Guy movie was in the works. Number 107. Also in 2019, Family Guy celebrated its 20th anniversary since it first aired back in 1999. After more than 20 years, who knows what else Family Guy has in store? I'll tell you this though, subscribe to Channel Frederator and you'll have plenty more 107 facts videos in store for you. Did you enjoy our video? What facts do you think we missed? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're there, like and subscribe to see more great videos every week. And remember, Frederator loves you.